You see this episode right here? Sponsored by Squarespace. That's right. I'm having some real trouble with Cat at the moment. Every night he goes out, he finds another stray. But are you serious? I was literally explaining to the camera about this. Well, it's going to have to go, isn't it? Because every time we bring one of those in, you know, it's only a matter of time until... That's got to be a record, hasn't it? All right, don't worry about it. We'll sort it out. Go get my sack. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 49. Today, I want to make a robot, um, some kind of weird, strange robot. I have an idea. Um, I'm going to draw it and then probably make it. But, you know, last episode, I said I was going to make a robot. So that's what I'm going to do because I'm a man of my word, you know. Um, plus, I have no other ideas. Um, no ideas. It'll be my 50th episode next episode, which is a big deal to me. I'm not sure if it's actually a big deal in YouTube terms because I think most people do like four videos a day, don't they? I mean, pull your finger out, Bill. I mean, come on. Every month, I challenge my patrons to build something, and I, I figured the 50th episode can be decided by my patrons. They can challenge me, uh, make it as weird, as challenging as you like. But anyway, if you'd like to help um, challenge me for my 50th episode, join Patreon, a link down below. It's not too late. Uh, what? No, it ain't your 50th episode anniversary. I only made you a few episodes ago. I mean, I've only uh, adopted you a few episodes ago. People like cats. I don't like them. I don't like people. Let's make this robot. I'm poo poo making stuff and I'm gonna poop in your face and, and poo pee party. Thank you for that lovely intro, Hugo making stuff. No, this is my sketchbook, uh, sketchbook number two. Anyone who's watched the show for a long time would know I filled the first sketchbook. So you may be thinking to yourself, there's a few pages that we've never seen before, and that's true. Unless you're a patron, I've been sharing my pages exclusively with patrons because I feel like it's something nice I can do for them, uh, and they seem to be enjoying it. So if you'd like to see the pages, join Patreon, or you could just screenshot the video, you know, if you want to be like that. Anyway, what I'm drawing is a giant kind of mosquito robot thing that goes around sucking fluids. Uh, simple as that, really. I'll go into more lore with Bill's story time later on, uh, but we call it a gasquito. Uh, we decided the name on a stream, and uh, I quite like it. So when I say fluid, I mean any kind of fluid. This thing's main objective in life is to just suck up any liquid it can find. That's its uh, programming. So, you know, blood, oil, gasoline, water, wee-wee. Anything, really. And that's what we're going to make. So I'm building a robot that's not like blocky and square. I like to go for these clear transparent baubles you get at Christmas time. You can find them in a pound shop. And these little plastic eggs. Anything that's kind of round and plastic. It's a really hard shape to make. Even these Kinder Surprise eggs that I don't think you can get in America. Because we just, we just can't trust you with them. So I always collect up these spherical shapes because they're like impossible to make. Try and make a sphere. Go on, go on, I dare you. Uh, anyway, uh, I use this scourer to kind of scuff up the surface. I'm not sure if you call it scourer in America. We call it a scourer here. Sounds very English, scourer. And I'm going to use the cheapest of cheap glues. Look at that, you couldn't even stick the label on properly, could you, Poundland? So if you take a sphere and you attach a hemisphere, which is half a sphere, to the back of it, and then another hemisphere, you get that kind of grubby look, which is that look I'm going for. Don't tell my wife, uh, she doesn't know. This is a shampoo bottle top that I'm gonna use as the head, I think. Uh, I mean, it fits that curve pretty well. Okay, I'm using that. So as per usual, I'm using super glue mixed with baking powder to get a nice kind of solid bond. A uh, bit messy, but that's all right because I'm making some kind of scrappy, messy robot. Funny enough, I'm always making messy, scrappy robots, so it's never really a problem. 
So I'm going to drill a few holes to add some legs and I found this Black & Decker drill in a town fate for one pound. Uh, I had the drill bits, everything included. It's incredibly powerful and scares the shit out of me, but one pound. So whenever you need to cut some wood, uh, just prune the wood. Get one of these pruners, it's the best tool for cutting wood or pruning. So I've talked about Christmas wire, sorry, generic holiday wire quite a lot. Uh, you buy it in your pound shop at Christmas and stock up because uh, I use it for everything, like tying bits of wood together and super gluing them together. And I'm probably gonna use it a lot in this build. So I've been basing my models lately and I wanna make a base for this one. Um, and this is an old placemat that I've cut to shape. It's, you know what those old granny placemats they stick on dining tables so when their lukewarm plate of food is put on a dining table it doesn't explode into flames? I'm not really sure what they're for, really. Uh, anyway, they make good bases. These are plastic cake pop sticks. I use these quite a lot, uh, worth getting hold of. So this is a recent discovery from the pound shop. Uh, this is a fidget toy for kids to fidget with. I and mean, we used to just fidget with our winkles back in the day. We didn't have toys, but you know, they make really good leg hinges for your robot and they break into little segments. So it's pretty handy. And I think that's about it for the kind of silhouette, the structure, the main structure of the Gasquito. You know, it's all fun from here. Um, have a little walk, go on, have a little. Oh, he hasn't got eyes. Uh, yeah, that way, go on, keep going, that way, go on. Oh dear. So this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you've ever wanted to make a website and you're not really sure how to do it, Squarespace is the place to go. Look, you get provided with hundreds of templates like these just here, and they're all pretty cool designs, I'll give them that. And uh, say you want to make a website about pickles. Look, oh, there we go, there's a pickle website. You can literally open this up, change the names. There you go, you have a pickle website. So I decided to make a website of my own for bill making stuff. Now I've made plenty of websites in the past and I have to say that Squarespace is the easiest and most intuitive website build I've ever used. It's uh, so easy to get great effect. I mean, look at this, this took me like five minutes. Uh, so if you wanna make a website, click on the link down below. There is a sale going on, uh, there you go. So now it's just time to bulk this thing up, you know, lots of uh, lots of layers, I think. And I'm gonna use these plastic conduit things. You run wires through them, it keeps them safe from hamsters, I think. Um, but I'm gonna use these to kind of bulk the legs up. So to add detail and bulk the body up, we're gonna use lots of holiday wire and garden wire, which is the thick rubbery stuff. Uh, sticks well with super glue though, so don't worry. So once the garden wire's gone down, I use some uh, generic holiday wire to fill the gaps. Basically, we just want to add as much detail on these legs as possible. Like they're kind of organic in a way. That's kind of my idea. Um, you, ever, you ever get the feeling you've started something that's going to be incredibly tedious, but you know you can't stop now. You have to keep, yeah, I think, I think that's the theme of the video. So this is a wire coat hanger piece. Uh, I'm going to use it to make some arms that come out of its head. Now I didn't draw it in the illustration, but I figured this thing needs to pick things up to kind of drink them, if you know what I mean. You know, who doesn't need a couple of arms sticking out your face, you know? I know, I know, I finally did it. I finally included a Games Workshop figure into one of my videos. Uh, this guy, I believe is like some kind of Necron, I think. Uh, but this Gasquito is going to be drinking him for everything he's worth. You know, kind of like the way that Games Workshop drinks you for every single last drop. You know, um, you know, almost like there's some kind of message here. Yeah, so I imagine the Gasquito would tangle you up and drink you with, uh, you know, this thing. Uh, this is from the top of a silicone bottle, I think. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna use this and uh, this and kind of stick them together to make that. So I'm going to add lots of eyes to this thing because you know me, I like lots of eyes. You need lots of eyes uh, when you kind of disc Games Workshop, you know, you need to keep eyes on the back of your head. You never know when they're coming for you. So like the body, I want to bulk out the face with wires. Um, and uh, hold on a second, there's someone at the door. Hello? Oh my 
God. They're here. They found me. So I need some space marines at the door. I'm off. I'm off. I'm sorry, all right? I'm sorry. I wasn't here. I was never here. I'm back. I'm back, everyone. Sorry. I had to hide out there for a bit, but I did manage to get some work done on this thing. Um, God, those space marines get bigger every year, don't they? Anyway, I want to try and make some metal plates using EVA foam and see how that looks. So my plan is to add these little metal plates on top of the wires for like, you know, some really good detail. I mean, I should probably add more, more wires up there. Um, it did take me quite a while to do the face. Um, I'm going to be honest, but all right, I'll be back in a bit. Ugh. So now it kind of looks like Swamp Thing's testicle, but you know, it's a cool method if you want to make something swampy and viney and you know, but let's add some more plates. So I decided to use a thick layer of EVA foam uh, just to hide some of the lumps and bumps. And there we go, I quite like the look of that. Uh, it's, I have hidden quite a lot of detail, but it's all about the layers, you know, the layers. So I just want to interrupt the episode for a minute. Excuse me, Bill, can I interrupt? Yep, sure, Bill, you can interrupt. Um, it's nice being your own boss. The 16th of September, the Tabletop Gaming Magazine is holding a convention up in Manchester. I don't know why it's in Manchester, but they are. And they invited me to come and hold a workshop uh, where I'm going to teach people how to make uh, beadbots and kitbash. And if you're around in uh, Manchester or you can get to Manchester, come and see me. I'll put a link down below. Um, it'd be nice to meet as many people as possible because, as we all know, I have no friends doesn't mean we're going to be friends though because uh, I don't like people or cats or myself anyway so I have lots of little mini glass bottles now I thought I might use them for some potions or something in the future if I became full D&D &D geek but I, you know it hasn't happened yet uh, but I am going to use them for liquid containers on the back of a giant casquito not geeky at all. And I'm going to be making my collection of fluids with UV resin. That's a weird thing to say. Uh, a few videos ago, uh, quite a while ago, I made my own alcohol ink and I never really saw its purpose or its use, but actually what it's really good for is tinting uh, UV resin. So uh, I'll put a link up here for the video. I mean, I say I will, I'll probably forget. Uh, maybe remind me in the comments if it's not there. So you need a little UV, ah, uh, a UV torch to kind of, uh, I don't know, what's it, what's it called? What does UV resin do when it goes hard? It goes hard, you know, like your dad. Uh, basically with the alcohol ink in there, it takes a little bit longer to harden, like your dad but you know, just stick at it like your dad. And there is my collection of fluids. Now I'm gonna use a bit of conduit wire to make these kind of wussy looking little potion bottles into kind of manly apocalyptic robot vials of liquid. So when I cured the resin, I kind of held the bottles at an angle so they wouldn't look weird when they're stuck on the back like that. Uh, see, they look much better. Um, I, I may add some metal plates to blend those in a bit more, but for now, I think that will do. I think we move on to the paint. So welcome to the painting section of the video, which I like to call Bill Storytime because painting stuff is boring. Um, but, you know, I like to talk about the model I'm making and maybe explain more about its lore and, you know, story time with Bill. 
So as we know, this is the Gasquito, and the Gasquito's one job in life is to just go wander the waste and suck up all the liquid it can find and take it back to the factory. Now the factory is a place deep underground, uh, an AI uh, machine that builds robots nonstop, just keeps building robots. It's, that's all it's supposed to do, that's all it does. But the machine doesn't build robots like you and I would make a robot, you know, like uh, out of cardboard boxes. The AI makes robots the way that it thinks God made people, you know, organically, biologically, you know, fluid. Um, I mean, it's a bit deluded, you know, um, but it thinks that organic life is the ultimate machine, which isn't true, you know. Or, I mean, it is in the case of Eric's hobby workshop. But, you know, oh, by the way, I was talking to Dan Does here and he said, you know, those glass vials look a bit vulnerable on the back. And I'm like, yeah, that is kind of right. Maybe I should add something on there. Um, which I did. Uh, so thanks, Dan Does. Uh, I'll put a link down below to his channel. He's my twin brother, by the way. Um, so you, you might want to go and check him out just, just for novelty sake. Anyway, back to the story. So the Gasquito is kind of a folklore kind of horror story that they tell kids like, don't fall asleep outside, don't stay outside after dark, the Gasquito will get you. Uh, you know, which is kind of what happened to this guy right here. Oh, I just remembered. I've got to paint a Warhammer mini, haven't I? And I can't just paint him brown and rusty, I guess. I mean, I can try. Oh, here we go. And that's the story of the Gasquito. I don't think it's a horrible creature. You know, it's one purpose, it's programming. It's just to collect fluid. And we happen to have lots of fluid in us, you know, some more than others, like my daughter. She is everywhere. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. So there we go. Uh, that was, you know what? This build took forever. Uh, and a lot of it I did off camera because I thought, why put you through it? I was a bit naughty. I did make a nice base off camera uh, but I do have a video about making bases which is just there but yeah it took me ages like a lots of threading wires and sticking little plates of armor <sighs> it took forever don't forget down below I've got a link for the tabletop gaming expo where you can meet me I, I, I don't know why I keep saying it like it's something you'd want to do or you can become a patron and decide what I'm going to do in my 50th episode which is the next episode and I think that's it. Um, anything from you? Oh my God. I mean, he's... I'll see you next time. Get my sack. And there we are, the Gasquito. I'm really happy with this. Uh, thank you everyone who watched the live stream, kind of gave me the idea for this. Um, and the name, whoever came up with the name, that's a really cool name. Leave comments down below if you enjoyed the story time with Bill section, if you like the lore, you like the sketches, you like all the world building stuff. I like to hear what you lot think about that. So I guess I'll see you all in my 50th episode next time. Uh, if you would like to help decide how I'm going to celebrate my 50th episode, like, you know, what you want me to build, all that stuff, join Patreon. It's like a couple of quid a month. Uh, it barely costs anything. It helps me a lot. I'm going to talk to my patrons on Discord and on Patreon uh, very soon, and we can figure out the 50th episode together. Um, go easy on me, please.